Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to compute the minimum variance portfolio of a stock. So just a little background. So here we have two stocks, AT&T and Best Buy. And over a one year period on a monthly basis for every month, I have the adjusted closing price of AT&T and the adjusted closing price of Best Buy. And based on that, I compute the AT&T returns. So the return for AT&T on any given month is simply the price for that month divided by the price for the previous month uh, minus one. So that's B4 over B5 minus one. And this is B5 over B6 minus one. Keeps going like that. And likewise for Best Buy. And you have a portfolio return, which is the average of these two returns, depending on uh, what percentage of the stock is contained in each portfolio. So this computation assumes a 50-50 split between AT&T and Best Buy. But if you change this, you can see these things will change as well. Okay, now what I then have is I have the mean return for AT&T, which is just the average of all these returns. And I have the mean return for Best Buy, the average of all these returns. I have the variance of the returns for AT&T, the variance of the returns for Best Buy. And I also have the standard deviation, covariance and correlation. Uh, please see my previous video to uh, get a more detailed explanation of these uh, terms. So what I now do is I compute um, uh, various scenarios. So what if you had AT&T 0% and you had Best Buy 100% in your portfolio versus what if you had other combinations of AT&T all the way through 100% and 0%? What would be the mean? What would be the variance and standard deviation? So I compute all these values and then based on that, I am able to draw an efficient frontier curve. So this curve is basically a plotting of all the risk values the variance, uh, actually the standard deviation on the x-axis and all the average returns for these portfolios on the y-axis. So if you take a look at the very first point here, 0 0.50, that represents uh, a return of 0.50% at 100% AT&T and 0% Best Buy. And then it keeps going like that. So in this, very briefly, the efficient frontier is all points above some point here um, so if you take any one point on this curve, say take this point, for the level of risk that is implied by this point, you cannot get a higher return than this value. You could get a lower return, but not a higher return. So that is what is meant by the efficient frontier. Now, again, please refer to my previous video for a more detailed explanation of the efficient frontier. So here we want to devote our focus to the task of finding out that point on this efficient frontier curve that represents the lowest possible risk or the lowest possible variance, which is the same. So standard deviation, which is the risk here, is just nothing but the square root of the variance expressed as a percentage. So with that said, um, I am setting up the problem um, in this manner. So let me just go up a little bit here. Okay. So I have, let's say, AT&T, 50%. Best Buy, one minus the percentage of AT&T. The expected for portfolio return is nothing but the weighted return. So basically you take AT&T's percentage, multiply by AT&T's uh, return, average return, Best Buy's percentage times Best Buy's return. And uh, then you get this. So C23 times uh, D16 plus C24 times um, D uh, E16. So then you get, based on that, you get uh, the expected portfolio return. The expected portfolio variance is given by this formula here. So if you take a close look, um, it squares each of the percentages and multiplies them by the corresponding variances. And then it also has a third term here, two times uh, each of these percentages times um, the covariance, which is the formula given by uh, this expression here. So now that we have this, we are now ready to do an Excel solver on this. So we can go over here, go to data, click on the data tab and click on solver. And solver is a what if analysis tool. Okay, So what we want to do here is we want to set some cell here. Um, that's our objective. So our objective here is to minimize the expected portfolio variance, which is this number here. So I select C26. And I want to minimize uh, this value here. So I click on the min um, radio button. 
and I want to minimize this by changing some cell. Okay, so I want to change the percentage of AT&T. Okay, so I say C23 in the cell. So that's all. And now if you click on this and click solve, solver will try out all possible combinations of AT&T stock percentages and see which one results in the minimum possible value of portfolio variance. And that happens to be 68% of AT&T stock. And you can click OK here to keep the solver solution or you can restore the previous values. Either one is fine. I'm going to keep it. Click OK. And so now you have the combination of AT&T stock and Best Buy stock that you should own in order to minimize the risk in your portfolio. So if you look at um, this figure here, so 68% of AT&T stock is kind of close to 70% here. So somewhere near here is where you should have uh, the minimum uh, variance. And if you look at uh, this uh, graph here, that should also verify your uh, Excel solver finding. So somewhere near 70%, you have a return of 1.88. So that would be this one here. So this point here represents the absolute minimum uh, riskiness of among all possible portfolios of AT&T and Best Buy. So that confirms our Excel solver finding. So that's how you would find the minimum variance of a portfolio using Excel Solver. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.